every dental office needs an emergency kit. So we're going to be looking at what type of drugs are in the emergency kit. And here's the learning objectives. Let's go to the next slide. So this is an example of what an emergency kit for the dental office would look like. And you can see um, this is a very well organized emergency kit because it actually labels at the top what each um, drug is. Now, when we have an emergency, um, I hope that when you're actually out in the work field, you don't experience an emergency, but chances are you probably will. And so this is why we need to be trained in CPR, because we can better treat our, um, or help our clients when they are going through an emergency. So all of us need our CPR updated regularly every year. ACLS stands for Advanced Cardiac Life Support Training, and this is mostly for dentists that are offering conscious sedation. So we don't have this training, we have CPR training. We wanna make sure that we prevent any emergency emergency situations, and we can do that by calming the patient down. We can do that by looking at the client's um, overall appearance, overall posture as they're walking into your op. You know, do they look good or do they not look good? Because if they don't look good, then perhaps there is a, um, we want to be careful so that uh, we avoid an emergency. The telephone number should be posted. What they say in the textbook is that you need the telephone number of the closest doctor, the closest emergency room, and the closest ambulance service. So yes, 911 is the number one number to call, but they also want um, all offices to post the telephone numbers as well. For doctors, for emergency room, and for ambulance service. Another thing that is important is that, yes, 911 is the main emergency number to call, but in some offices, you may have to dial a number nine before you can um, obtain the outside line. So it's important to know what number you have to dial before you dial 911. And this is only in some offices. With the emergency kit that we looked at earlier, so this was the emergency kit, What's important is that we check it every three months to make sure that it's not out of date because drugs expire and we can't have any expired drugs in our kit. So there are actually services that are out there that you can pay them and they'll come every three months and they'll check your drug kit to make sure that it's up to date. So when the client walks in, we need to observe them. We need to look for their, you know, their, their uh, coloring of their face, their respiration, any, any abnormalities we need to be aware of so that we can ask them the right questions and, pre and prevent an emergency. Look and listen to them. Are they nervous? Are they anxious? Because that can trigger um, an emergency or that can trigger a, uh, they, could tr they could faint, they could have high, um, they could hyperventilate. There's many things that could happen when they're in a lot of fear. We always start by doing um, vitals, so blood pressure and pulse rate. Uh, pulse rate. This is not uh, necessary for us, per se, because we don't do any blood work, but we could do vitals. This is really, really important, and this could be a test question. One of the ways to avoid a, med a medical emergency is to take a complete patient history. When we have a good understanding of what the client is um, taking what medications he's taking, what um, conditions they have, we can better manage the medical emergency. If you need to seek medical consultations, we can do so. So I think if you need to call a doctor to see whether we can proceed with the cleaning, that's something we could um, do, reach out to a doctor. And then sometimes, as we talked about before, we may need to give the clients pre-medication or we may need to tell the client to take their pre-med before coming. And so we were looked at that before, right? We were saying that if they have a prosthetic heart valve, so a big thing put inside their heart, if they were born with a heart condition, like a hole in the heart, or if they were previously diagnosed with infective endocarditis, those are people that really, really need to take pre-medications. Now, let's say you do have an emergency in the chair and you need to do CPR. Well, before, what they said was to do A, B, C, to check for airway, then check for breathing, and then do the chest compressions. Well, now it's revised because they have found that this is the best way 
to go about it, where you offer chest compressions. So it's CAB, chest compressions, airway, and then breathing. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with this when you do your CPR training. When you, you, someone is in an emergency situation, drugs are not necessary for proper management of most emergencies. So if you don't know whether to give a drug or not, avoid it. Don't give them the drug. But if you are confident, then give them the drug. So when you treat someone with, who is um, going through a medical emergency, the first thing you should always do is obviously call 911. Then you position the client pro properly. So sometimes, actually, it depend, and we're going to go over some situations, but let's say if they're fainting, then you want to make sure that you position the patient properly by putting their head down and raising their feet so all the blood rushes to their head. Uh, you may have to administer oxygen. You may need to monitor vital signs and administer CPR, especially if they're not breathing. So we're going to look at different categories of emergencies, and they're all listed here. We're going to look at each one of them. So let's start with the first one, which is lost or altered consciousness. Syncope, also known as fainting, is the number one dental emergency because people are, when they come in, could be very anxious, could be very fearful of the dental treatment, um, could be, they could be worried, worried, and that can cause a sudden decrease in the blood pressure. So... What do you do if someone faints? You put their feet up. So you raise the chair, or you put the chair all the way down rather, and make sure their feet are elevated so that the blood rushes to their head. There's also something in your drug um, emergency kit that you may have, and it's called the spirits of ammonia. That's actually what it's called, it's ammonia inhalants. And you just put that by their nose and they should wake up when they smell that. Hypoglycemia is another common medical emergency, and this is where um, someone feels all these symptoms, sweaty, shaky, headache, hungry, and hypo means less, glycemia, sugar, so they don't, less sugar, they have less sugar in their body, and so to, to uh, treat that, if they're conscious, what you want to do is you want to give them a sugary drink, or um, sometimes in the emergency kit, we'll have like oral glucose, which is like a candy that you give them, and it's a high sugar content that makes them feel better. If the patient is unconscious, then there's this medication called dextrose, and that's something that you would, or someone who's trained, would administer uh, via IV intravenously. There's also diabetic coma, and diabetic coma is typically when you have too much sugar. And so when you have too much sugar, what can happen is that uh, this person will probably need hospitalization, and when they're in the hospital, they'll do some lab work, and then they'll decide how much insulin to give them. So for you, you just have to call 911. 